Hi guys, welcome back. I have a cool background to do today. I have some more Pretty Pink Posh um, stencils that I want to use and there are like three layers for them and I love them. So um, I'm going to start out with some Newton's Nook uh, stamps. This is for my sentiment. This is the creepy cameos <laughs> and um, I've had this a couple of years and so I want to put the sentiment so it looks like it's in the moon of course because why wouldn't you so i'm going to heat set this this is just some plain um blue cardstock from uh, stampin up i think it's called blueberry bushel i think blue something like that and some of their white embossing powder i'm using a versamark uh, ink pad which is a clear sticky ink to ink up my stamp and i've also used a non stick uh, no, a bleh, <laughs> a um powder tool that's the word um on my cardstock just so that i don't get too much powder everywhere and as you can see i am tapping it not flicking the cardstock it made a massive difference i was starting to think that there was something wrong with my embossing powder and why i have not used embossing powder for so long because i was having issues it was me. <laughs> it was a user error. So I'm heating with my heat tool. I heat it up a little bit and then I heat the back of the card and then I came to the front and it just melted straight away and it was just beautiful. So um, much better than previous experiences where I landed with a speckly white thing as a sentiment and I don't like that. If it's a sentiment, I want to be able to read it. So I then temporarily stuck the card to my... Uh, media mat and I'm using the like backer of the of this moon this moon mask has been <laughs> in many videos <laughs> and I actually worked out today I think I've had it since 2016 it's still going so just saying and um, I just sort of lined up so I could get the sentiment to look like it was in the middle of the moon roughly um, and then I'm taking the first layer now the layers are all labeled like ABC I'm actually doing CBA um, because I want my stars on first and I'm using some fossilized and amber oxide ink. Now oxides are like kind of like a combination of pigment and dye ink. So they will sit on top of the paper more than, than soak in, if that makes sense. So that um, when you want to layer, you can actually layer on top of the previous layer rather than a translucent ink or like a normal distress ink will absorb into the paper much quicker so although this paper isn't it, it's a regular cardstock i could still get the layered effect on it without having to use like a fancy uh watercolor paper or something where you know you can add layer on on layer as long as it's dry that made any sense anyway so i'm using my grid as a guide to where I want my stencils to line up you can put them wherever you want I just I'm a bit funny about things like that and then I used some milled lavender I thought a little bit of a pinky purpley color for the clouds and again not going heavy-handed just going layer over the top some of the clouds you can see the stars kind of peeking through some of them it's more covered but it still works really well then before I do my bats um, I'm actually going to take, I was going to use the chip sapphire around the edges, which I will do, but I took the brush that I used for the milled lavender and I went around and defined my moon a bit more. Um, and it just, I needed that definition so it looked like a moon, if that makes sense. Um, so I grabbed a bit more ink and went around the edges again, just a bit more definition there, took the mask off and then again took the same um brush and went over the center of it so that i got more of that sort of ghost-like look on the moon so that it had that definition with that kind of like a ring around the edge which i love and my last halloween card <laughs> with the boo-boo and everything it kind of did that it had that same sort of effect so once i'd done that i then lined up my um my bats because i also wanted my bats to go over the moon so that was the other thing the other reason for taking off the mask um i probably should have done that beforehand because i could have had my clouds going over the moon as well but nonetheless <laughs> the bats do so that's fine so the clouds look like they're going behind it but that's fine <laughs> 
but I've got my baths going over the top, which is what I wanted, what I was thinking at the time. So just a quick clean up. I'll clean them properly later. <laughs> well, maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a, um, this is the Tim Holtz uh, Stampers Anonymous Reflections stamp set. And there's a whole other thing that you do with these. And essentially they're backwards. So I'm going to use the Victorian Velvet Oxide Ink with this sort of scripty um, stamp and just stamp it straight over the top of everything. It was so cool. <laughs> I love doing this. Um, I don't have a lot of like text backgrounds, but I love this look. Nicole Spore is totally inspiration for this because she does this and it always, always looks fantastic. But I had this and I thought it fits the width of the piece of cardstock. So it, and it worked really well. So I just thought, why not? It's scripty, nobody can read it anyway, <laughs> even if it's the right way around, it works perfect. But reflections stamps um, from years ago are a whole other ball game. <laughs> They're very cool, um, and so maybe I'll do a video on that so I can show you how that works. So over the embossed area, I just took a paper towel to take off the ink that was sitting on top of it. So that's a nice thing when you've embossed areas or sentiments or whatever it is. You can then take that excess ink if you ink over the top; it just comes straight off. And then I went around the edges with a chip sapphire to just sort of, it almost makes the center glow a bit, um, but it's just, instead of using black soot around the outside, I use that instead and it just gives us nice glow. And then again, I had to spritz. <laughs> um, again, it's not watercolor paper or anything like that, but it still gave a bit of texture around the edges, um, which I was happy with. So, um, and obviously distress always reacts. So <laughs> it's gonna do something, which is so cool. So now that I've, um got that sort of off to one side i'm using a very old school um stampin up die set there's a the stamp set was called pick a pumpkin i believe um which is what i've labeled this i can't remember what this die set was actually called like what the name of it was um it it is from a few years ago for me it was one of the best halloween years for stampin up um i think i pretty much bought everything in that halloween <laughs> catalog that year because it was so good and it was so up my alley so yeah I, I I don't know the name of this but I think it goes with the pick and pumpkin the fence I think goes with one of the other stamp sets that came out the same year anyway it doesn't matter um there's these cute pumpkins in there and they've kind of got this um sort of more outline look but I thought that's perfect for something like an inlay kind of technique so I grabbed a couple of colors. There's kind of a peachy color and like a coral color. These are just scrap bits of cardstock, so I couldn't tell you where they come from, although I think the coral is stamping up anyway, but yeah. Um, but I don't know what the peachy one is, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's a peachy coral color pumpkins <laughs> that we're gonna do. So I got the bigger one, um, and obviously because I cut them out twice, I've got two in the opposite colors because I'm gonna do this inlay sort of technique which I've done before and I've done loads of videos well not loads but I've done a few videos on inlay it's really cool it looks very very um I don't know it's, it's different but I, I love it so I'm just layering all these pieces in over the top of the fence so the fence just gave the pumpkins a bit of ground to sit on so that they're just not floating in the air and then the um, once you inlay you can't see what's behind there so it's it's very easy to do you could do it separately and then ink the edges separately which is not what I did so I grabbed some oxide ink in vintage photo and just used a small um, this is a makeup brush but used a small blending brush to go over the pumpkin I did use it around the edge uh, of like the fencing and that but I go back with the chip sapphire later on because I just thought it looked better so but do what works for you and then literally slapping it on <laughs> there's nothing fancy about this <laughs> this is like this is a, a messed up kind of pumpkin <laughs> but it looked it it looks really cool in the end actually um and i'm quite chuffed with this little card so here's where i just take the oxide uh, the chip sapphire sorry and just go around the edges i was careful around the pumpkins you don't want a blue pumpkin i mean that'd be kind of funny but yeah 
And then I'm going to um, add some more ink to the pumpkin until it was, you know, the way I felt that it looked right. Especially that this is also a nighttime scene, so you don't want bright... Well, I say you don't want... I wouldn't want bright colours because it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> um, being a nighttime scene, you want that sort of more muted tone to whatever you're doing. Um, so this first star <laughs> took me ages to work out how to get it in there. Eventually I took it out. Most of them had stayed in the PG Colour cardstock, so I just popped them through using an um, embellishment wand and then used the embellishment wand to pick them up and then for some reason it just went straight in the second time, so, <laughs> so weird. Um, and then more ink over the top of that um, pumpkin. Then I have these little leaves that are also in that die set and um, these like, I guess, vine things. I, I don't know. I mean, I grew pumpkins one year and they went mad in my front and gone. Um, but they, I just, I cut them again in like a darker green. Um, again, it's more muted uh, being a nighttime scene. And then also just eventually just stuck them on because I couldn't decide where they had to go. So <laughs> I just kind of winged it at this point. And then put the leaves on as well. They've got this funny little cutout and I just couldn't work out. My brain just couldn't just didn't know where they had to sit so I just kind of shoved them on there <laughs> and went that'll do <laughs> so again once they were stuck on I got some more oxide ink over the top um, it just adds something and it looks better in real life than even what it looks here I mean, it looks all right here but it when you see it in real life it's often a little different to what you guys see on um, you know on, on photos or film or whatever so um, I had a few of these like sprig things that cut out as well and I just cut down the like stems so that I could get them to look like they were coming out from behind the pumpkins in hindsight. I should have done that first but <laughs> I didn't so <laughs> we're just rolling with it now but it works and it's fine. So I just felt like I needed a bit more height to these pumpkins. If I'd not put this on there it would have been fine honestly. But I just, I like the way that these little things looked. The other thing I would have done, which I didn't do, um, I might go back and do this, is just to add some white highlights because the only white thing on this card is the sentiment. So it can look a little out of place because it's the only one like it. Um, so I may go back and just add a few white highlights to like the pumpkins and the leaves or something like that, just so that it sort of ties in the white sentiment but it's it's fine it still looks kind of cool so and then um right so then i decided to put it onto the front of the card now this is just a card base of like a thinner black card stock so i think i said last one of the last videos when i've used a in fact it was the last halloween one um if you've got a thinner card stock but you want it like this is a textured cardstock so it's a nice sort of something in the background um for the front of the card but if it's a thinner cardstock sometimes it will um want to sort of fall over or flop over when it's you know you try to stand the card up so what i do is one because it's a black cardstock so you need something or somewhere to write i add a white panel to the inside of the card that does two things one it obviously gives you something where to write but it also makes the card a bit sturdier so you've got the front piece on and then you've got the back that's a bit more sturdy as well so um, I just then stuck the panel on the front with some foam tape just for a bit of something why not <laughs> so that's it so it's a very layered background but I think it looks so cool I'm really chuffed with it um, I hope you guys give this kind of thing a, a go there's a bit of inlay there um, there's a you know the layering your, your different inks and stamps like I say these work really well with pigment or or sort of oxide inks but try it try stuff this is I searched my stash for little bits that would work with it you know like the pumpkins and things I've had those for years so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this guys and I will see you in the next one bye <laughs>